This is WOMM LP operating out of Burlington, Vermont, 105.9 The Radiator. Good evening, it's The Rocket Shop. I'm your host, Tom Proctor, and with me tonight is Bella and the Notables. Hello! Hi! Hello! Very nice to see you. I feel like it's been a while since we've had like a full band. So, seeing four of you in front of me is almost intimidating. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys all for coming in. How are you doing today? Thank so you. We're excited. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to, to hear you. Uh, we like kicking it off with a song, so what have you got for us? You wanna do the new one? Yeah. We're gonna do the two folky guitar ones first. Get you in the mood. Want me to start? Yeah. This is by me. It's called I Never Thought I Could Lose You. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, okay. Life's put me through the test. And life's made me quite the mess And I never knew I could lose you And still be me Guys, that was a lovely way to start the show off. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, as there's an entire four of you, would you like to go around and introduce yourselves and uh, tell us what you play? I I have never seen these microphones in the middle of you guys before. Let's One quickly. In the pick them up. Oh, there we go. So yes, you guys can just speak, speak freely. Andrew, go for it. Hi, my name is Andrew Bedard. I play drums in the band. I'm the old guy in the band. <laughs> Been playing for a little while and got picked up by this band a little over a year and a half ago or so. Yeah. And I've uh, been really enjoying it since. So fantastic. Well, yeah. nice to meet you, Andrew. Thank you. And uh, how about Keys? I'm Sam Atala. Um, I've been playing. I used to play with Bella sometimes on trumpet back in the day, probably like five or more years ago. And uh, I've been playing with this group since last. Uh, I don't know. July or August of 2021, so okay. a, little, a little while. Nice, and um, well, pleasure to meet you, Sam. And how about on bass? Yep, uh, my name's Greg Rothwell. I'm playing fretless electric bass tonight. Um, I normally play upright bass with the group, but we've been working out a different sound and just practicing these songs in a closer environment. And uh, yeah, I've been friends with all of them, and Bill and I kind of just got them all together. Now, now we're now we're a group. So. So you two are the kind of the, the genesis of the band. Yes, I reached out to Greg <laughs> after COVID. Um, well, I had 
Bell Notables has a little history, actually. We started right after I graduated college, and um, I had a, it was a much larger band. It was actually me and my good friend Preston Murphy, a guitarist, and I kind of put it together. We had sax, harmonica. It was really large, and we, we really did a lot in Montpelier and kind of central Vermont area. And then uh, moved back up here uh, with my partner right before COVID. And then COVID happened. And you all know what happened there with music. Everything kind of stopped. And uh, right when things started getting going again, I reached out to Greg and was like, I'm really itching to start. And um, my guitarist, um, who, who started the, the Notables with me, actually moved to Seattle for grad school. So I was just kind of like, you know, at time, I think our time had ended with the other group. It had been about two and a half years. And I was like, Greg, Let's get everyone in the same town and like just a quartet and let's just kind of make this a, a more traditional jazzy jazzy thing and make it really accessible and see what we can do. And you were the one who was like, Sam and, and Andrew. Yep. Because <laughs> they were your favorites. First, um, first choices. And like Sam said, he's a phenomenal jazz trumpet player and he's been doing a lot with keys the last few years and uh, we fell in love with both of them. And yeah, so Bell and Notables kind of took a turn, and that's what we've been doing for about, yeah, a year and a half. Yeah. So this is kind of Bell and Notables 2.0 in a way. Yes, yes. Yeah. How, yeah. how different is it from the kind of like OG Bell and the Notables? Is, is it vastly different, or if you kind of, is it actually very similar? If you close your eyes and think hard enough, it could be. Not a lot more horns, right? Yeah, we don't have harmonica, we don't have sax. And I think I, I chose that because. I always, my problem is, as a soprano, soprano jazz voice, I was always too quiet, and it's always my issue, and I thought, you know what, if we just kind of tone it down to a quartet, and also accessibility, can we get everyone in the same town? Get everybody, you know, kind of close together and practicing and, and make things more uh, easier logistically. And also, as we know, with, with, with funds and stuff like that, it just, it just made everything much more easy to plan, to set up, and kind of more sustainable, so... I kind of think, yeah, the quartet. And also, I do piano. have a passion for piano. I can hear it better. <laughs> There's something about it, like when you'll hear when I'm improvising and scatting, it's just my ear. I think maybe that's because I'm um, a piano player. I just started guitar like this year. But so that kind of was another, I wanted the piano to be kind of a, a four key, a key for that. And which is cool because a lot of places we play have grand pianos. You know, the oh, Deli 126, the 126 has a grand piano. Um, so I just play at Hugo's in Montpelier. They have a grand piano, so yeah, I, there's just something with the voice and the piano that gets me. Sam, despite the, the apparently the, the abundance of grand pianos in Vermont, do you do you miss picking up uh, a horn? Oh, I I this? still I still play the horn. Oh, you do? And, yeah, I, I'm playing. Um, yeah, this this weekend I'll be playing. And I I it just more bands seem to require keys because I don't know you can play like any really any genre and. I still love the trumpet. Whichever one I play less is the one I want to play, so it's kind of how it works, you know? Have you ever played piano and, and horn in one night? Are you ever, like, sitting there behind the grand piano and reaching? Yeah, sometimes I play them at the same time. If Like, I play in a reggae band what? where it's, like... Same time? So, like, you're, you're playing yeah. and, and taking I mean, the keys at the same time? Well, I'm in this reggae band, and there's, like, a lot of organ parts. So once I start playing, like, if I play in the verse or something and it goes into the chorus, like, obviously the chorus usually comes up. Not all the time, but a lot of times. And uh, there's a horn line I have to play, so it's like if I just stop playing the organ, it's gonna sound like something got like, like the foundation got ripped out. Right. So I kind of just by necessity have to do it. It's not very good, but <laughs> people, people, he says it's not very good. But Sam's one of the one of the most busy musicians and yeah, so he's always busy. The boys play We're lucky to have him. God's got ADHD. We're lucky to have him. Can't can't stop. Drawing a song, you're always having to do something. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I've I've gotten a little better at it, but yeah. I'd say that's a very impressive thing to 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 be able to see it, even just to see someone to play play trumpet or something while also be on a piano. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I won't do it tonight. So. <laughs> I'll sell it. Um, <laughs> Bella, uh, you yourself, long and illustrious career in music. Um, when I was studying your bio, you you do mention that you were songwriting before you could speak. So I I would love to know what that sounded like. <laughs> uh, how did that even work? Were you just were you, were you songwriting nonsense? Was it just squiggles and only you knew how to sing? Yeah, uh, hopefully that's not an exaggeration. But yeah, I mean I have a really musical family. Um, as I mentioned before, to when we were setting up to to the Sound Friends, um, my cousin was on the show as well, um, Johanna Rose. 
with uh, with Angela. Mm -hmm. We were a really musical family. Um, so I, I did grow up just like immersed in music. All of my cousins have like voices like angels and they all play something uh, just really musical. And that's kind of how I grew up. It's just kind of been passed down generationally in our family. It's just um, a way that we kind of survive and live life. So I, I literally just grew up always kind of singing and humming and and writing little ditties. And my, um, my grandma and my mom would write them down in little books. And then uh, I started with my, my twin. I have a twin, um, Josefina. She also plays violin and flute and sings. Uh, we kind of just songwriting. We're songwriting from, from the beginning. So I really think... Yeah, I mean, my mom just said I was always just humming and kind of gibberishly singing, and I remember my first two songs too. Oh no way! Yeah. Have you have you revived them at all? Have you brought them to the band and gone like, let's 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 do a 2023? Never no. Of One of the it was about what's my baby gonna be, and it being girl. Yeah, it had dance moves and it was on the porch. It was great. I had my cousins. Everyone was decked <laughs> out. And the other one was about take me away to Carolina. Yeah, we had a band. It was called Triple Threat. <laughs> me, my twin, and my cousin had you Helena. Been to Carolina at this age, or were you just Oh my gosh, I haven't been. You've never been even to Wait, <laughs> I might have gone like for a dock once for a boat, like a cruise boat, when I was in eighth grade. But no, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're just imagining this mystical land. Called I was Carolina. a dreamy little little girl, yeah. So I just, yeah, I've always been. I grew up just songwriting little ditties. Mm. It's actually annoying. It's like all day I have little ditties that just come in my brain and um, I have lots of books full of them and they might not ever become anything uh, and luckily you got to hear two of them today but um, then I got really into jazz um, in college and was like this is a way I can play with other people because I'm really primarily a singer so um, I'm just trying to trying to go back to that is really nice so this is a great opportunity yeah. to really show some to do a little push to do some some of those original songs but a lot of them I don't think will ever <laughs> See the light of day. I don't know. I mean, have you, have you ever flipped through the books that your mom and grandmother used to write when you, you know, you're humming and you're making these ditties as a as a kid? Have you ever flipped through them and oh, I thought you were a pretty good songwriter even back then. Is it? I I probably should. I'd have to find them, but um, they're somewhere. But this has been something that you've done your entire life. You've filled up notebooks and upon notebooks. Yeah, little point. melodies, vocal melodies. Do you ever kind of, do you ever look back and even like, you know, three, four years previously kind of flick through your notebooks and go, ah, oh, actually that was really solid, I should probably bring that back. And have you kind of reimagined yeah. some of the songs that you wrote when you were younger? Yeah, um, I have some songs from middle school that are awesome. I think they're, they're kind of like, I don't even know what genre they are, what are genres, right? Mm. But they feel very emotional to me and kind of R&B-ish. So it's nice to go back and be like, that's my flavor. That's my OG flavor. <laughs> and I get a little inspired. Um, yeah, that's my next goal is to really be more confident and kind of looking back at those, revisiting those with the band. But, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a vulnerable thing. These are songs that were written for myself. It's like songwriting, is, it's private. It's, for me, it's like, it's expression, it's, it's coping, and it's... Um, yeah, it's a way of uh, getting through the world and understanding the world. So it's like, do I want to show these to the world? Um, or do I want to, you know, do a song that's, that's less vulnerable? It's, it's yeah, it's, it's complicated. I often ask people who come on the show, what was it like when they kind of uh, displayed their first song to the world or was ready to, to display their first song to the world? Not necessarily it was their first song they've written or whatever. But the first song that they played live in front of an audience. Now you've done that since you were like two. So uh, when was like the first like I, I guess conscious performance to maybe strangers, I guess, and and of your own songs? And how was that for you, coming from such a musical family where it sounds like everyone does it? Yeah, that's probably why it's scary because they're all amazing. <laughs> I've I've got some high bars I've got to climb. Yeah, um, middle school. Yeah. Started in middle school as a seventh grader, probably doing them at all the talent shows and the, the um, coffee coffee shows and the open mics. Yeah, uh, it felt great. I was very nervous, but everyone loved it, and I became like <laughs> the uh, piano twinkler and, and kind of a uh, soulful singer. Wow. <laughs> um, and do you still kind of get, it sounds like you kind of still kind of maybe get that nervousness about kind of displaying your songs to the world. 
And how much of that is, do you, do, you, do you purposely try and write songs that are a little bit ambiguous, maybe aren't about a specific person or a specific moment in your life, in order to kind of give you that, you know, that wall and that shield? Or are mm. you kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bear the, my soul to the world kind of person? I think I took some time off from that, and now a, a lot's happened to me in the last, you know, year and a half, some really, some really um, hard grief. Mm. And actually, both of these songs are, are grief songs, so you could say I'm ready now, yeah, to share that and, and, and kind of see what, what happens and express myself in that way. And as a, it kind of feels like I'm, I'm showing a different side of my musicianship, mm. a different singing flavor. Um, scary, but it feels good. Um, yeah, and I'm lucky that I have a great group and a great community, so. Yeah, I mean, very talented musicians behind you. It, yeah. Um, we would love to hear another song if you if you can uh, yeah. treat us to one. That'd be great. We're gonna do the other the other grief one by Bella by me. This is called All These Pieces of Me. This is kind of a life review song. All these pieces of me make me who I want to be, so perfectly, delicately me, and it's taken me time to figure out what's mine, all of this time, with you on my mind. there yeah. with all these pieces of me uh so bella i again read on your bio that you, you're doing a master's in music therapy right now um yes. which seems very apt um but with the focus on children with autism has your studies had an impact on the way that you play and you write music uh you know really studying this from an academic perspective has that, that kind of like changed the way that you can approach songwriting Totally, yes. Um, a lot of, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing music therapy and counseling through Leslie. Um, 
my undergrad was just music and highlight uh sorry jazz was the concentration so yeah it's it's definitely looking um yeah i mean it, it's looking at a lot of self awareness identity a lot of identity work a lot of um going back within myself and digging up a lot of vulnerable things and um being very in the moment present i see you i hear i'm with you um that kind of really humanistic philosophy looking at life and at myself and at others and um if I'm going to help, you know, children and other people do that, I need to be able to do it myself. Mm. And I think that's kind of why um, I think as a musician, as a helper, you know, I'll make a good therapist and a lot of um, blooming therapists are natural kind of helpers, right, mm. um, in their life early on. We just, we've all come, a lot of my classmates, we've all come at it from different places. I happen to be a musician as well. Um, and... Yeah, I think it definitely does. I think it's brought uh, some rawness. I actually, the second song you just heard came from an assignment. <laughs> so, oh, no way. Thank you, homework, for that one. <laughs> that, yeah, that was literally a life review assignment. Um, and we do a lot of improvising. We call it clinical improvisation. Mm. And it's really, it's really being present. It, it definitely, it makes me look at music in a whole new way. Uh, it's like you're, instead of just um, kind of thinking about your sound and yourself you're 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 thinking about and i feel like in jazz we we already are doing a lot of connecting and like um right trying to reach like self-actualization and like reaching these higher places like we're really in the moment right we're improvising we're we're doing things that are spontaneous but also in like in clinical improvisation and like and being with a human in a session working with a child you're um you have to be Really present, yeah. It's about presence, um, understanding, listening to yourself, being aware of yourself. Is this me? Is this someone else? So it's a lot of awareness, a lot of identity work, um, being present in the moment, repeating myself. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, does that does that make? Sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, I guess as well is I'm kind of curious about whether or not the the responses you get from the children you work with. Whether or not you, based on their responses, uh, the the way that you then write music, it might be different as well. Because you're kind of playing to a different audience. And you're not just playing to this audience, you're trying to engage them in also music itself. And so it, it's kind of looking at music and practicing music in a really different way. And whether right, or not that them. bleeds yeah. over into the Bellow and the Notables about when you're writing a song, are you now kind of writing it for that, you know, that the children that you're kind of working with as well as writing it for the audience that you'd usually have? That's an amazing question. Um, I mean, I referenced them in that song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I said, what did I say? All the children I have changed will bring me sun. Yeah, I mean, children are an amazing thing. Uh, they, they lift you up in the most surprising ways. Um, gosh, yeah, I think... I mean, time will tell how yeah. much that bleeds into. But yeah, I think it does. I mean, I think everything you do in your life comes out some way musically when you're on stage and you're you're with other people. I think my way of interacting with them, I think my way of interacting with the audience is different. Um, I would say in the last, I've been in school for about a year and a half, yeah. Um, so you've been in school for a year and a half, and this band has been in existence, or this band 2.0 has been in existence for about a year and a half. So you took these two projects on at the same time. That's was quite a lot to, to to bite off in one moment. Yeah, gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah, my brain's been really full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take a lot of naps, and I have three amazing cats. They're okay, very cool. relaxing. Yeah. Um, three cats together are relaxing. We've got two, and trust me, I mean, that... <laughs> Very rarely I'd say they're relaxing. They're mostly yowling at each other and fighting. They have their moments, yeah. Um, we have an old man one. He's he's chill. Oh, okay, he keeps the kids, he keeps though. the other two in check. Yeah, gosh, I don't know for your question about am I singing, am I singing to the kids? Um, I don't know. I think that there's some boundaries and divides at times where where it is my time and where where it's their time. Right. But in terms of when I'm with, if I'm in the session um, therapy session, like. It's not about me, it's about them, completely. Um, and it's about our relationship, our rapport. Mm. So I think I've just gained a lot of really good skills about, um, probably with with you guys and with the audience, about how do I bond, how do I build rapport. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think that's a really big skill for, for, for the therapy sessions. And, again, like, when I'm in that session, 
Yeah, it's not the Bella show. It's the kid show. It's all about them. I am facilitating change and growth in them. And I'm assisting that through me the medium is music. So it's it's different. Performing mm. and, and the therapy is not the same, but they certainly bleed yeah. into each other in, in how I'm growing and how I'm aware of things and interacting with other people. Yes. Um, and... I mean, we kind of already mentioned your family, and I've got to say, we, we loved Johanna coming on with Love Angela. That's how we, we, we first got inter interacted with Johanna, and then Johanna came on on, her, on their own, which was just phenomenal. Loved them. Uh, it certainly sounds like your family is a little bit different than a lot of other families. We, we know that Johanna lives in a treehouse, yep. which is <laughs> quite the adventure in and of itself. Do you all share these traits? Do you live in like a in a school bus or something? Um, is it is this kind of something that just every single one of you in this family has its own, your own kind of weird, <laughs> cool adventure that sounds like it's coming from a storybook, or is that just the the Johanna Rose kind of section of the family? Yeah, that that might be their kind of <laughs> um, uh, storyline right now in yeah. their life. Um, I mean, I I, gosh, yeah. Um, I might be more typical, normal in how I do live in a house. Uh, I'm in Colchester, chilling. <laughs> um, you know, before that, I, I did live with my sister and my um, and my family for a long time in a big farmhouse, East Montpelier. So we do we do we're very close knit. Mm -hmm. um, my other sisters do still still live together, and so we're very tight, very tight knit. I think. <laughs> Yeah, you could say we're maybe a little too close because we're always together. Um, that's just how we've gone through life. <laughs> but you guys are all musical, though, so it kind of just begs a question. If you not thought of the Jackson 5 kind of scenario happening, you know, where you all get together and you play your own, you, you do, you know, the whole the whole troupe doing all, one big performance. Is that something that you've come across or you've, you've explored? Um, There's so many of us. I mean, I have, like, I have, like, 25 cousins so yeah my my mom was one of nine so <laughs> um and some of them are more visual artists mm. i will say that um so they're more likely to do the you know the stage direction and you know the i think we all just have stuff. our own yeah we all have our own bands but it is kind of separated by family mm. so <laughs> like johanna plays a lot with her um her siblings will and helena um, they're Milwaukee, but, and I play, you know, often with my twin, and, uh, then I have some cousins that are in Colorado and California, and they kind of play together. I think we're separated by sibling band groups. Um, we do come together every time there's a holiday since we were little. We grew up, again, like I said, like, before we could talk, we were all together singing, humming, whatever you could do, whatever modality. So, gatherings and holidays that's kind of how we come together as a family um it's basically a giant sing along um so christmas is really really fun it's really amazing um we just had a a giant kind of get together with with everybody um unfortunately it was for a kind of a sad event uh it was for a, a celebration of life um uh, for our grandmother but the entire family came together and we we made some really beautiful music and that's our way to cope and kind of navigate that and remember who we are and honor um everybody in the family and um the traditions that we have so yeah i think holidays and whether they're sad or happy bring us all together and hopefully down the road we can try to try to do some more stuff as a big group there's just a lot of us yeah and a lot of the little cousins my baby cousins are now older and they're they're in their 20s and they're they're definitely moving places a lot of songwriters a lot of performers so hopefully they don't forget about me and i can come up <laughs> come sing some backup you just need to grab those coat tiles, like, man i'm one of the ogs come on yeah, so right. yeah it, it sounds like your grandmother was, was very much like the matriarch of this this giant family, though. I mean, you said that she, yes, she and your very mother much both were kind of like writing down all these things. So is your grandmother also very musical? Is it, is it all coming from from the, the grandmother, yes. basically? Yes, yes, yep, I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, I have some music on my, my dad's side, but definitely, yep, we've all kind of followed her, yes. No, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I'm really glad that you kind of have that celebration of life. That sounds remarkable, I would have... Love to be in a fly on the wall when that production came together. It was, um, it was beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'd love to hear another song though. If you've uh, if you've got another one yeah. in your hopper, we're gonna do our jazzy ones now. Oh, wonderful. We warmed you up. And this 
one is by Mr. Sam Atala. Um, sorry. Actually, I see this. Oh, that's sorry. <laughs> I'm a holder. Check, I think so. Okay, Here Without You by Sam. This is an amazing gem. You're gonna love it.
gorgeous. Here Without You by Bella and the Notables. Uh, Sam, great tune, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, how much is this is a collaborative effort? You all Do you all bring tunes, or is it is it between you and Bella? How does this work? Um, I think um, this is the first one I've brought in, I think, but hopefully everybody will start bringing some of their own tunes. I know Greg is in a band called The Discussions and writes a ton of stuff for that band. Mm. And... Uh, I think they're playing this week. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> no, please do. Yeah, no, we like pr- cross promotion here. They're playing this weekend at the radio booth, so you should yeah. go see them. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah. Um, and uh, Andrew, I don't know if you write tunes, but uh, not so much. Not so much. No. Not so much. <laughs> um, I just hit things while they're doing it. So. You do it very well, though. You know. <laughs> um, you all play in different bands, so this is this is kind of like you. I, I don't know. Does anyone consider me? except you? This is your band, Bella. And only, and everyone else, this is kind of everyone else's, like, side band, if you will. Is that right? Or, I guess. Kind of. one way to look at it. Um, does, what does this band do that kind of fills your cup with, that, you know, maybe the other bands don't? Or, you know, maybe you're a heavy uh, rock fan can, or something. I can go with this. Um, yeah. So, this is one of the few jazz bands I'm playing in currently. Mm. Um, I'm definitely playing in a bunch of different rock kind of outfits. Um, Artie Levine, who is an old radio personality, I play with him. We are recording at the Tank this weekend, actually. Nice. Uh, so that's kind of uh, kind of more adult contemporary rock. He's an older dude, chill. You know, we're not playing uh, any heavy metal or anything. You know, right. right. We're playing some nice chill rock stuff. So I'm playing with him. I also play in a cover band called The Rough Suspects. Uh, we do have some originals as well, but mostly kind of play at biker bars. Okay. So I'll go from playing jazz one night with this crew to going to play a biker bar and playing like ZZ Top <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that on another night. And then uh, I'm also in a Pearl Jam cover band. Uh, I also play some kind of intense jazz fusion stuff in another group called Mob Barber with Sam, Avery Cooper, and some other guys. Uh, occasionally I play with Andriana Chobot. All said, at the end of the day, I'm kind of in and out of five or six bands. When do you sleep? Uh, when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you ever have multiple gigs and multiple ni- on like the same night? Do you ever Absolutely. go from yeah, one gig to the next? Times weeks? where I've got to race from one gig to another, and it's like, okay, who can grab me from here? Or like, <laughs> I gotta have a drum set here and here, or yeah. how's this gonna work, or and whatnot. So it's definitely happened uh, more than one time. Uh, I've had a few of the New Year's uh, celebrations where I've had to play three night three shows all on, on New Year's. Uh, so it's like, okay, you got a four o'clock spot at this church with this <laughs> band, and then you're at 7 p.m. here, and then you're at midnight over here, and uh, you gotta go from jazz to rock to funk all in one night. Do you ever forget real quickly, because I'm, you know, as you might tell from the, my accent, uh, uh, English, every now and then, it happens very rarely, but every now and then I forget that I'm meant to be driving on the right rather than the left, and I'll pull out right into the left hand lane. Oh my God. Yeah, well, it's always doesn't it's usually happen. When I, but show does that... this, I show up dressed like this to go play a biker bar. Yeah, because I forgot what gig I was playing tonight. And yeah, I'm like I'm like yeah, wearing a nice up. shirt. And I'm like, <laughs> like, it's just yeah, I'm just gonna rip this out from real quick. So there's been some interesting times. Um, it's a lot about being a drummer. It's a lot about wearing a lot of different hats. Yeah. So it's like kind of about being an actor. Am I funny today? Or am I serious today? So uh, do you have like no one preference? It's kind of like I love all I love all drumming and so any kind of uh, any everything of these I works. play brings a different aspect of me. Yeah. Right. So what I get with this group is unique to playing with this group of fine musicians. And what yeah. I play with another group of musicians is unique to that group. And it allows me to take any facet of my personality. Some days I'm angry and I want to hit the drums <laughs> like a monster. Yeah. And some days I want to try to play as chill and beautiful and back up a, a singer, you know. So yeah. uh, it all pulls different skill sets out of me, which I feel just makes me a more well-rounded drummer and allows me to keep in the circuit, hopefully. Yeah, do, do Sam and Greg, do you kind of agree with this kind of uh, being an actor and, you know, some days you want to kind of really go off on a, on a slap bass solo and then some days you're like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the rhythm for a jazz band. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, with this group, you know, we, we play, besides uh, these originals, we play a lot of, like, American Songbook, and like traditional jazz and mm. like that really does it for me i like love all those old songs and we get to reinvent them every night and like play through them like and it's, it's not like in a funk band which is also a lot of fun i'll sit there and set like a bass line and everyone else kind of runs around we're well, playing the song the same way every night when yeah. you're in the funk band right? yeah and then i can approach this and like you know create like a, a my approach to bass 
is like a little bit less um, traditional where I'm not holding down a groove mm. where I can I can let the drums take it and kind of go off in my own little tangent and like we're all kind of like working together to create something collectively. Yeah. Um, so like that's that's what's different about this group that I really enjoy. Uh, I noticed that as well, Bella. I mean, I've we've watched quite a fair enough jazz bands. I don't often hear too much scat, to be honest. And and it's it's great that you're bringing that in, and it's great that you know as, as a vocalist, you're also not kind of sticking to to one path. Um, was this something you always wanted to incorporate in your in your in your specific band, or is this something that's been new that's been part of Bella, the Notables Two Point with this kind of scat element in it? No, yeah, I've always been doing that since I, I mean, in jazz, if you're a singer, most often you're going to be improvising and scatting. Mm. Not, not all jazz singers scat, but almost all of them, and it's mm. a way for me to be like, the voice is also an instrument, and it's my closest instrument, and it's the thing I know that I've been experimenting with since I was little, so I know it pretty well, and it's, it's I can't like really explain the feeling of like that spontaneous like feeling of when we're we're soloing but it's like it's like this giant release it's like i'm like sometimes i'm somewhere else it's like um kind of like electricity it's like it's very um the feeling is just it's addicting it's like like after we come after we have a show i almost sometimes i feel exhausted because i feel like i let everything out or like it's just i, I have nothing else it's like a, it, it's a different way of expressing but yeah no ever since bell and little girls notables were a thing <laughs> scat has been a thing and i think over kind of the six years of like seriously gigging it just mm. has perfected itself it's something you have to practice and learn and teach and i kind of have my own syllables that i use and i used to be really like um worried about kind of kind of if they were okay and traditional and i realized that's just my flavor and they're a little soulful even better um everyone's got kind of their own scat and it's just yeah, um, it's been a thing since, yeah, since I, and I think, I think it's even better as a songwriter because you're already making up melodies, you're already mm. um, playing with your voice and, and writing songs, so you could say that makes the scatting and improvising even easier because I'm used to already doing that and experimenting, but instead I'm paying attention to the keys mm. and, like, the modes and the scales and, like, what they're doing, and I'm using my ear, so it's, like, kind of, it's a mixture of everything coming together, and, like, that scat, it's, like, one of the most amazing things ever, and it's really fun. And as a vocalist, you kind of also get that experience the same way that uh, uh, the keys and, and the bass can kind of play off each other or the... The lead guitar and the drums can play off each other. You've kind of got you, you get to that hell element as well. Yeah, I, I find jazz to be a music of selflessness, where you're all working as a team mm. and you're having more yeah. of a conversation on stage, versus in a lot of say rock bands or other bands, it's a lot. There's a lot of more ego, <laughs> and in a rock band, no, you yeah, don't say. And everyone's a little more separated. <laughs> there, it's a little more like, yeah, I'm playing guitar, I'm taking the solo, and it's there's. A little more of that going on, which I mean, there's a ego and confidence can go hand in hand. You got to mm. be confident. You got to be confident to get up in front of people, mm -hmm. right? And so ego and confidence can go hand in hand. That's a double-edged sword there for sure. Uh, but I find with jazz that it's more of a community where we're playing for a whole sound, and it's less about who I am, and yes. it's more about how do we work as a team to like, how do I make you sound better? Like mm -hmm. it's more of a game of how do I make him sound better when he's soloing or him sound better when he's soloing than what I do on my solo. Right. Like, you know, like it's, it's more of a, uh, especially I guess being a drummer is a very supportive role. Um, right. But I just find that it's more of a shared uh, musical sensibility as opposed to like, like playing funk and we're playing the song and it's kind of as written and we're, you know, rocking or whatever, but there's not that in touch, like really intimate being in the here and now and mm. responding off of like a little riff he played and I'm responding and whatnot. Yeah. So mm. I just find it very communicative and really selfless, I guess. And yeah. I fought really hard as a singer to be like, I am not up here. Like, I don't like even being really separated from them. Like, I, I'm a part of the band. I'm just like a horn in how I use my instrument. And, you know, singers are, are just as equal in that kind of jazz frame, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. It's, it does seem that you kind of give space for each instrument and, and support for each instrument including the vocals, and it's not just so front and centre, as you may see in, a, in other kind of genres. Um, 
we've not got too much time left, but I, I want to ask, a bar uh, Radio Bean on the weekend, and this is a different band playing, where are Bella the Notables playing in the next uh, few weeks? And where can we find you if we can't see you live? Um, Friday. <laughs> We're playing at the 126, formerly known as the Delhi 126. Uh, we have a monthly residency there, so every second Friday, you can catch us there. Um, again, we're doing jazz standards from the American Songbook. We're throwing in some some country, some blues, um, some kind of R and B soul stuff, bossa nova. It's really a mix, and we're even working to bring more into the mix. So uh, that's kind of what we have scheduled now, Friday, and then next month, second Friday. Um, yeah, and then we kind of all bounce around and do our own things as well. Um, yeah, and how about uh, socials? Are you on? Are you going to be? Is is there any kind of uh, any tracks recorded and on the Spotify's and the band camps and whatnot, or is is that to come later down the line? Not yet, but to come. Um, we've all been really busy, and I've been kind of in a place in my life where I was kind of stepping back from this and working more on my studies and right. and healing, and growing, and now I'm like itching to. I think we're ready, and it's been kind of enough time of us building and working off of those those um those standards to really branch off into thinking about that um you guys have you know, a bunch of projects you're doing with your original stuff right now so once that boils <laughs> down i'll start uh, being like hey let's but I gonna say, more, yeah none of you are strangers to a recording <laughs> studio it seems uh so i'm sure it will happen eventually and i'm very excited for when it does and when it does please Thank come you. in once you got an album together please come back in again we'd love to hear some tracks from the album. Time is right. Um, but yeah, we've got about time for one more song. So uh, what have we got to play us out with? Uh, this is mine. Um, kind of my standard I wrote. This love inside our dreams. I wrote this in college. Okay. And then you guys will come in on the second A. Cool. Is that my scene?
All right, Bella and the Notables playing us out there with love inside our dreams. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. This is lovely. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Please come back in once you've got something uh, something down in a recording studio. We'd love to we'd love to hear what your first album sounds like. A um, pleasure. Well, that's, as I said, that's all we've got time for this evening. Uh, join us next week when we've got uh, some big heavy world favourites, Laces, coming in. Uh, but for now, this has been WOMMLP operating out of Burlington, Vermont, 105.9 The Radiator. It's been The Rocket Shop. I've been your host, Tom Proctor, and good night.